Hi folks, welcome to an actually very exciting edition of Benda Speedruns. I'm joined today by indie developer Colin Horgan, also known as Me Less Than Three. Colin, welcome to the show. Hi. <laughs> I'm Colin. <laughs> I mean, you did a pretty so, good job introducing me, so. You know, I, I said it all. I said it all. Yeah. So Colin is, you are currently developing a game called Luca, which you've described as a nightmare action RPG about finding oneself. Yeah. It's a aesthetically fascinating game incredibly tight gameplay and you're you've got a kickstarter going and in just a couple of days you've raised eight thousand dollars which is amazing congratulations oh thank you yeah i'm very happy about that i'm um, just hoping that we get to the end <laughs> successfully keep, keep raising eight thousand yeah dollars. yeah if we stall here it's no good yeah but I, I, the trend is the trend is looking up has it been a surprise to you how quickly you've raised this money or is this all you know according to plan uh, um i mean uh i i had heard that uh if you raise like 20 percent of your goal that's a pretty good sign so we're at like 35 so i'm pretty happy with that uh and it's only been Dang. like three days as of this recording so even if we have like a, a really slow drip of donations from now on, as long as I keep up a certain pace, we'll be okay. Yeah, and, and once this video comes out, everybody's going to know about it. It's going to be millions of dollars in it's, just a few it's days. It's going to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before we dive into talking about Luca, I was wondering if you could talk about what your creative process looks like for you. Where do the ideas come from? What does the execution look like? Uh, that's a good question. Um, Weirdly, I have found that I am a lot less structured than a lot of the other people I've worked with or like other game developers I know. Um, I tend to like start a project just by like opening up Unity and sketching a mechanic or something. Uh, you know, like a quick prototype uh, of, of just like a tiny little thing that I want to do in a video game. Uh, and I have a ton of these um, that generally don't go anywhere. Uh, I think I have a folder that had like up to 200 gigs at one point of just oh abandoned, God. yeah, abandoned Unity prototypes. Um, until finally I find something that like I like and then start developing a bit more. And then uh, those usually get thrown out too. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's the rare thing where... <laughs> It's a rare thing where I actually like I move something beyond that initial phase, um, and but generally when that happens, uh, like I I know as soon as I press play because I'll be like yes I wanna I wanna finish this mm -hmm. or I wanna bring in this to a releasable state, um, and that's probably why like I, I used to release a lot more things like back when I was in school and just trying to like learn how to program and I figured a good way to do that was just. By making games uh now that i've i'm kind of like stepping into the commercial sphere i've become a bit uh you know like a bit more focused on these longer term projects but generally what happens is uh I'll, like i'll know that I'm, I'm working on something good when i start like actually wanting to like make art or sound for a thing hmm. uh so it, it kind of is like i start by making a very tiny version of a full game uh, you know, once I get to the stage and then uh, start building on it from there. Like, I like to get something that other people can play as soon as possible. Uh, I used to be really bad about, like, just assuming that people would know that a game's unfinished, uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, when I showed things to people. Um, but I eventually learned that, and this is maybe a bit cynical, but I eventually learned that, like, uh, a lot of people, unless they're, like, game developers themselves, don't really understand the concept of prototyping or gray boxing. So yeah. I've gotten into a habit of, like, when I say making a very tiny version of a full game, of, like, trying to make something that if you took a screenshot from it, it could theoretically look like a thing that gets released. Um, and then, you know, like, have, have that tight core made and then build out from there. Like, with, with Luca, I started with just a combat demo that pretty much had the aesthetic set down. It looked way less polished than it does now, but you know, the, the pieces were there and then there was enough of a loop that like I could actually put it out as a game that people could play. And then once I realized that there was an interest and it was something that I myself was interested in finishing, I just started, you know, making the, the levels and the different weapons and, you know, buddies and all that stuff. So yeah, right. that's my process, I guess. <laughs> That's, if only we could just yeah. release games as screenshots. Like, the, here's the screenshot, game finished, you know? Right. 
<laughs> well, it's ironic because uh, I found with with Luca especially, I've never made games that like look good in a traditional <laughs> sense. If you know what I mean. What, what do you mean by that? Well, so like, there's definitely a look to like, like let's just take indie games for example. There's definitely an indie right. game look to like the games that get really widely noticed and popularized and retweeted and all those things. And generally it's like this game looks like Cave Story or something kind of similar, or it looks like a, you know, a beautiful animated illustration, like something along the veins of like Don't Starve or Night in the Woods. That one is a bit less common just because it has a higher barrier of entry, I think. But uh, I've been seeing a bit more of those circulating around coming up. Uh, but whereas I, I don't really have a traditional like art background, I used to like to draw when I was a lot younger, but I kind of moved away from that as I got older just because of like school and stuff. Um, but you know, I still do like to flex my like visual muscles. Uh, and this kind of like hyper stylized aesthetic that uh, I created with Luca is kind of been something that I've been developing like in my own games over the past few years leading up to Luca, mostly because like I wanted to make games that didn't just have gray boxes as the characters, but I, I couldn't necessarily draw traditionally, like even like traditional uh, pixel art animation. Mm -hmm. So I, I made a game for the Global Game Jam 2015, I think it was 2015, called I Am Not a Machine. And I, want, I basically wanted to make a, a clone of Nuclear Throne but uh, with like a glitchy horror aesthetic because I was like really into that. So I kind of just sketched out this character that had a like a blue wireframe 16-bit uh, character and it worked for the style and all the enemies were like red wireframes. Uh, so that's kind of where the specific style of Luca came from. Um, and the thing is, it looked really cool in motion, but whenever I would try to take a screenshot of it, it was like really hard for people to tell what was happening in the screenshot. <laughs> and therefore, like because it didn't really look like anything they were used to, like it's pixel art technically, but it doesn't look like a pixel art game. Uh, so they would have trouble like distinguishing it and reading it, and therefore like just have trouble appreciating the screenshot. Therefore, like it didn't screenshot well. Yeah. This game doesn't look like Alboy. Must not be an indie game. Whoa, whoa! Oh man, I was so angry when Alboy came out because it started <laughs> a whole lot of discourse about how pixel art games should look and should games be pixel art, and oh, it was miserable. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, I'm glad I still stand out enough that people uh, have learned to appreciate uh, the look. And I and I've like taken a lot of feedback and gotten better about learning how to communicate what's happening in my game, both like in the promotional materials I use, like what kind of uh, GIFs and screenshots I put out into the world, but also just in the actual construction of the game and like how I use visual effects, uh, you know, hit effects, footsteps, uh, how I use Screen tells shake. in the animation. Yeah, yeah, to, to try to convey better what's going on. Um, like I had an interesting I know we haven't really talked about what exactly Luca is, but I'll go into a <laughs> mechanical thing where um, there's a mechanic in the game called the, it's now called the rewind, it used to be called the reset, so there's some confusion there, uh, where you can just instantly restart a, a fight in the game. Um, and like a piece of feedback I got was like, the, like a lot of people had trouble telling what it did, but even once they knew what it did, they would have trouble seeing like when they activated it. So there was always an animation and an effect there when it happened, but like I, because I was just so used to seeing it and knowing what was happening, I just let it go by right. too quickly and with not right. as much fanfare. So I like went to an extreme and I literally had the game slow down to half speed, zoom in on the character, and then it played the animation and then people just got it. Right. They were like, oh, I know that this is a thing. So, so that's an example of like a positive spin on having a weird style and hearing people say, I don't get it a lot. <laughs> the first time I used a, a rewind in Luca, I thought it was going to be like the Fez mechanic rewind. Mm. And I had just about finished a room. I was about to go on, but I thought, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll try this out. I haven't tried it yet. Oh, no. And I was so, so disheartened because Luca is so... Uh, 
punishing, I guess I'll say. Yeah, um, intentionally too, but I've, I've been yeah. fluctuating yeah. the difficulty a lot. I put in a difficulty select the recent demo. Yes, I saw that, I saw that. Yeah. I, has the, is the normal mode in the current difficulty select, uh, how does that compare to the difficulty in the previous demo? Uh, normal is the same as the previous demo, mm -hmm. but I've tweaked a lot of the, the battles and the numbers to be slightly easier. So right. normal in the current demo is easier than the last demo, um, even though it's kind of equivalent. Um, the truest way to play, in my opinion, and how I'm designing it going forward mm -hmm. is with the um, like enemies on the most difficult setting. At the beginning, it has uh, two different like difficulty modifiers that you can use because I want a lot of people to be able to play this, especially people who are maybe not so used to these kind of games, because uh, they can be pretty punishing and challenging. Uh, so there's a sin difficulty multiplier which determines the effectiveness and uh, power of like the enemy nightmares that you encounter. So at the highest difficulty, they're super fast, they're a lot smarter, they act more aggressively, all that kind of stuff, and they, uh, you know, they uh, take a pretty good beating, so you can't just like wipe them out really easily. Uh, and then uh, there's a punishment multiplier which determines how much damage your character takes. So on the highest difficulty, uh, in that regard, you die in one hit. In the lowest difficulty, it basically takes forever for you to lose. Uh, and so by like mixing and matching those, I'm hoping that people can find like the right difficulty for them so that you know a good majority of people could be able to play this. Um, I, however, play it on the most difficult difficulties and that's kind of how I'm balancing it right now because I kind of just love that challenge um, as mm -hmm. part of what draws me to these games like uh, you know Bayonetta or Metal Gear Rising uh, Dark Souls kind of but uh, we can maybe get into that later if people are interested 2D Dark Souls right? Yeah I mean it uh, uh, I like the kind of precision that 2D allows for mm -hmm. you know um, especially like pixel art 2D if, if you know if a pixel intersects with another pixel that's a hit right and that's right. The, there's very little ambiguity there and that's something that i struggle with in a lot of 3d games like especially uh the original dark souls which i find has a lot of, like jankiness that kind of removes me from the experience every once in a while i just want to say when my i was uh showing the uh, new Luca demo to my roommate yesterday, and we got to the Sin and Punishment scream. He said, "Oh, this is a ripoff of Sin and Punishment, N64 <laughs> game." <laughs> what? Because it uses the term Sin and Punishment. Because it uses the term Sin and Punishment. Full we, disclosure. We soon pass that. <laughs> full disclosure. I love that game, uh, but yeah, there's there's no real tie between those. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's a common turn of phrase you know <laughs> it's just we're, we're on to you now it's sin and punishment it's just a big i love treasure i think treasure is the best game developer ever even though i don't actually like i wouldn't actually say any of their games are like my favorite but like gunstar heroes is a beautiful magnificent game uh and i i won't hear anyone say otherwise have you played it <laughs> i have not played it uh, okay played. it was like 1993 sega genesis so it was one of their first games uh it's really good though it's a really fun side scrolling uh shoot 'em up kind of in the vein of uh uh whatever I'll... you're going slightly before my metal time. slug metal that's something okay, yeah no, it's no, kind of no. like metal slug uh, except you're playing as like a, a anime people in cool outfits and you can you can uh, like <laughs> full body grapple and throw people. If I remember correctly too, there's a bit where like you can take a grenade that a person's throwing at you and like throw it back and it's one of the coolest grenade throws I've ever <laughs> played in a game. It's way better than the Call of Duty grenade throws at the very least. Is that feature going to get into Luka? There's going to be so oh, many so many grenades. grenades. I kind of want to have a, a familiar that throws a grenade like thing, but we'll see. Oh man, the yellow familiar is just my favorite person. Oh, yellow yellow familiar rules and I've actually uh I've had to really tweak it down in power a lot and it's still really oh, no. good it's still really good though I, i'm not sure we'll we'll see my main strat in the uh world record speed run right now you know yes. no big deal just the just the world record i run. loved finding those those are great <laughs> i want to I, I i'm really excited to see luca get sped run by people uh, hopefully My people who are actually good at video games. Hey, I, 13 minutes is really impressive. Well, I think 11 in the the one you did, uh, the second one you did, right? Yeah, I've I've taken on the final boss or currently final boss in uh, with no deaths before, but every time I record it, it's just 
No bueno. Uh, that's great. I've been trying to do a Hyperlight Drifter no death run for a while, but then I realized I don't actually like Hyperlight Drifter as much as I thought <laughs> I did. <laughs> so I never got around to finishing that. I made I made a whole video series of myself playing through Hyperlight Drifter and like taking design notes because I think it's a really like beautifully crafted game and there's so much I wanted to learn from it. But then playing it through twice, I was like, oh wait, this game isn't as good as I thought. Uh, it's really well put together, I think, and I think like a lot of people really enjoy it, like with good reason. But it's not like a, an amazing masterpiece or anything, which mm-hmm. a lot of people would say it is. People have been trying to get me to play that game for years, but I'm just I'm terrible about someone telling me to you know watch this movie, read this book, so yeah. on and so on, and then I end up you know finding indie games on Twitter and uh, yeah, I mean they're the best running. anyway. So <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> the things absolutely. you discover. I I, I remember discovering. I don't even remember how uh, this game called Void, and it was mm-hmm. like a 2D hack and slash with a really interesting like mouse only control scheme um, that I was never very good at. And it was very simple. It was just like a giant white screen with some cool like uh, pastel color effects showing up every once in a while. And you played as this like guy in a black cloak, and you just beat up clones of yourself. That mm-hmm. you, you, there was like a dash and a slash so you know you got the two things that you need for a sword fighting game apparently um i have no idea i found it it's totally random i was probably just like looking on game jolt and it's like one of my biggest influences ever uh, just because it's like super it's super stylish and but super simple at the same time and like really confident in its own like ability to be what it is so anyways that's a void called uh, spelled v-o-y-d if uh, people want to check it out. Find it on Game Jolt. Yeah, that's how I found it. <laughs> I want to talk about some of the, um, speaking of 2D Dark Souls, I want to talk about some of the comparisons you've been getting. Yeah, um, I love this game. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I saw someone on Itch.io said, uh, it reminded them of The Binding of Isaac, and I, I listened to a previous interview you've done, and there's some... Uh, I don't know if you appreciated getting the uh, 2D Dark Souls analogy. Uh, oh. How do you feel about these comparisons you're getting? Um, honestly, whatever gets people to play the game, I'm totally okay with. I think mm-hmm. at that moment, I was getting like a, a bit salty because like, <laughs> like I think what I'm trying to do is like not really like Dark Souls. Like on the surface, yes, it is very similar in that it's a like melee-focused combat game with a stamina bar. Uh, so it's going to be impossible to like get that comparison because it's literally ripping a mechanic from that game, and that's like what people associate stamina bars with now, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's totally fine because like uh, like I think a lot of people like those kind of games uh, for good reason, and they're usually pretty well designed. Uh, so that that kind of comparison is works in my favor, um, but I think like. Uh, Part of why it uh, like doesn't sit totally comfortably with me is because I think uh, like I have influences as far as games go that resonate a lot stronger with the game, but they're just kind of not the kind of games that people who are attracted to like indie games of this level play. Uh, like you know, I mentioned Devil May Cry, but like really one of my favorite games ever is Bayonetta, and uh, mm-hmm. a lot of my like core. Like, both design and thematic Thai ideas kind of come from my experience getting really into Bayonetta and, like, trying to uh, pure platinum everything in that game, which, like, is basically, like, you know, you you don't take any damage, you do these beautiful plays and rack up a ton of combo points, Uh, you, like, do everything really fast and stylish, like, I, I love that kind of play, and... Uh, I was kind of putting a bit of that into this, what's essentially a horror action game. And I know that sounds really weird. It's like mixing two things that maybe shouldn't mix, but I totally have a legit plan as to how they come together in the end. And it's going to be really beautiful, but I don't want to spoil it. Uh, oh, man. Especially because I don't think I could even communicate it in words. Uh, <laughs> the best way I've ever communicated this is like, imagine like Luca starts I'm just going to use these comparisons because I guess they work in this scenario Luca starts as a horror game or like a Dark Souls game but it ends as Bayonetta or like a a fast super stylish kind of combat game where you become you know totally self-confident and like a master of your own body and like you create these beautiful pictures over with your you know 
the, the, uh, with your mastery over these like horrific nightmares so it kind of goes from one extreme to the other that's like my desired end vision for how a, like a player's journey with luca will end hmm. uh of course like the the demo is only like the first like two chapters and a tutorial of a plan 10 so i guess you only have like a bit less than a fifth of that um so it's it's mostly in the horror realm and that's pretty good uh i want to entice people and hopefully uh when the full game is done they'll be able to go on that journey the the way i want them to just sitting down with the game even in its current form i i had this feeling of even when i was doing crappy i was like oh i'm doing all these sick moves i'm, I'm the best at this game then i i would look back at the footage and think like, oh my god i'm missing every attack what am i doing yeah yeah but uh, it feels it feels good when you're playing it. It feels like you're you have that mastery you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Well, and hopefully, like as you play it more, as you become more comfortable with it, and as you you know keep fighting against these like encounters, you uh, get better and better and can feel yourself. You know, go from that initial like "Whoa, this is cool" to like "Whoa, I'm cool." You know, <laughs> like that's that's the change that I want to happen. Building self confidence through through yeah, horror video games. Yeah. It's a it's an interesting thing I haven't seen a lot of people talk about, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, I guess I, hopefully that answers that question. I'm I'm not actually as angry being compared to Dark Souls as I I would be, but I have been happy. I've been getting a lot of comparisons to Near recently, and mm -hmm. that's something I'm way more proud of because that's a, a a title near and dear to my heart that I am honored to be compared to. Uh, have you played either of the Near games? I have not, no. Uh, okay. I would definitely check out uh, Nier Automata if you're into these, like, action games with weird stories. Uh, like, don't be turned off by the anime-ness of it. It's really good. <laughs> and again, you know, I'm, I'm an indie developer. I, I have a game channel, and I'm, I'm terrible at games. I don't play many games. Yeah. So I'm, I, I'm, I feel uh, that. I'm, I'm not very good at this, but I'm, yeah. I'm doing my best. I worked on a multiplayer game called Ectoplaza that came out last year on the Wii U, and... Uh, even though I like was probably the person who touched the game for the most number of hours, I was still terrible at it. I would <laughs> lose among the team every time. Yeah, I was. I was actually. Um, I wanted to mention Ectoplaza because it's a real uh, departure from Luca. Are, are you comfortable working in both styles, or is it, um, uh, I, is one easier? For I think you? Luca is definitely a lot more like in line with kind of my what I feel are my strengths as a developer. Um, but I think it shows in the, like, different, uh, production stories of the two. Ectoplaza was, like, a, f like, fairly big indie team of, like, uh, four main, uh, people and then some extra artists that, uh, touched the project over the course of its lifetime. Um, I wasn't the designer on it. Uh, I was the lead developer, so I was, like, pretty strictly, uh, doing just the, the coding and such and I you know I did get to like flex my kinesthetic muscles like with the like uh, camera code and putting in screen shake and big flashes <laughs> on big hits and stuff that I really like to do um, but that's, that's definitely made it into Luca yeah yeah so I think that's like the closest uh, they, the cameras are fairly similar especially the way we use a lot of punch-ins and cut-ins although I did take the idea of using punch-ins from uh, the Ectoplaza lead designer uh, Max Palazzo so shout out to him for inspiring <laughs> that um, weirdly I think that was inspired by uh, we were watching like just isolated action scenes on YouTube from various movies and one of them was uh, I haven't seen the full movie, but like uh, an action scene from uh, Kingsman, uh, mm. that movie that came out a few years ago, where there's like a giant gunfight in a church, and it uses a lot of long shots. And whenever like the main character like gets a like a shot in on one of the like people attacking them, like the camera kind of jerks in a tiny bit, and we really liked that, so we took mm. it for whenever a character is knocked out in Ectoplaza, and I've kind of kept that in uh, Luca as I moved on to that one. So there are connections. <laughs> they, they intertwine. Yeah. It's actually the same universe, same canon. Oh man, that would be, that'd be something. Uh, <laughs> that's something we're trying to do with uh, the games made by uh, the Ectoplaza team, uh, Syndicate Atomic. Uh, you can follow them at Syndicate Atomic. There, there are things in the works, nothing like public right now, but uh, every game by Syndicate Atomic will be connected. So that's cool. Maybe Luca's in there. Who knows? 
I don't even know right now. Dark Souls is fine. I have a joke with my friends that I don't like Dark Souls because it makes me really angry, but it's fine. It's probably the best game of that generation. Not that I would ever actually admit that in total sincerity, <laughs> but I don't know. Have you, you heard it here first, folks. Yeah. Have you played Dark Souls? I have, yeah. I'm a okay. big fan of the first one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good, probably. That's my review of it. <laughs> probably. It's probably pretty good. I don't know. Whenever whenever I try to dive into it, I get to Capra Demon, and I get so angry that I quit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel you, feel you there. Yeah. yeah. I want to, I wanna like, finish it eventually, just to say I have. But yeah. knowing that there's still so much after that. Because I've, like, seen the whole game played all the way through. Because, like, who hasn't? Yeah. Uh, anyway. At some point, that's like enough. You know, I, I've, I feel like I've played so many games because I watched my older brother play so many games when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 a, it's not a like incomparable experience seeing someone else play it and play it yourself. Like, obviously, it's a different experience, but I think you still get something out of it. Yeah. Uh, versus, except you know, in the just... case of Luca, where you have to play it. Yeah, play Luca, please. <laughs> it's better it's better than watching it although it looks pretty cool in motion i think it looks real cool yeah uh, you, your gifts are always on point yeah I, I have a lot of fun making those although i've had to up my game i realized that people like uh montages better than mm. just straight gameplay gifts so mm. so now i have to do a bit of video editing instead of just recording myself play the game <laughs> and then your hard drive is dead yeah that's why i have so little space in my laptop right now uh, yeah. Oh, b before moving on though from Dark Souls, uh, <laughs> uh, I I have gotten a few comparisons to Bloodborne, and I'm 100% okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna compare my game to a FromSoft game, compare it to Bloodborne, <laughs> and I'll be very happy. I'll spread the news there. I'll spread the yeah. word. I haven't even played Bloodborne, but I feel like it's so much of a better comparison mm. that uh, I, I approve. More directly about Luca. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so this game you're making. Yeah. Um, this is sort of an open-ended question, but where are you hoping to take Luca? T interpret that as you will. Um, well, I hope to get uh, my campaign funded so that I can... Uh, like The whole purpose of the campaign is so I can dedicate myself full-time to completing the game uh, mm -hmm. over the next like eight months or so. Um which means basically just making more of what's already there. Um, all the core systems are there. Like you can you can change your mantras, which are basically the different combo sets. Uh, you can mix and match them. You can uh, equip them with familiars, which basically act like as different long range options, like different side weapons. Uh, and uh, there's a virtue system that's kind of in there, uh, but I want to really blow that up where uh, you can. Uh, like change and stylize your uh, character builds to have different effects like you can survive a lethal attack or like I want to put in one that's basically the the rally system from Bloodborne so like if you get hit you can hit the enemy back to get some health back uh, I want to do a bunch of things that play with the stamina bar like if you uh, pull off a successful counter it resets your stamina if you kill an enemy it resets your stamina so you can like create these super cool long uh, combo chains uh, if you like play in a certain style, or maybe you can like stylize your movesets to focus more on the charge attacks and the buddies, so you use that resource a lot more. Um, basically, I want to like turn the combat into like a fully fledged, really cool uh, toy that you can play with, mm. and then combine that with like you know completing the single player story and having that uh, open up into a more open kind of infinite, endless. Uh, you know, uh, not sandbox, but like uh, almost like a like a roguelike arena type thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's that's a bit off, and that might not even be in the first release, depending on uh, how much time and money I have. The scope uh, is is broadening here. Yeah, <laughs> over yeah. the course of this interview, the game's getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> well, that kind of comes in the uh, the stretch goal area. Yeah, yeah. But the, what, what I want is to, you know, uh, finish the story. Uh, like, I have eight more chapters laid out and planned. Um, I have a bit of the third chapter, which after the Messiah fight, um, 
already that's the one outside the church right yeah that's that's where the demo ends and so i have a creepy ending oh man we can talk about that at some point because i've gotten a lot of mixed reactions to it (laughs) Mm. but um was saying yeah so like i have a bit of that done and like there's there's basically just going to be like a whole single player story you know that has a satisfying conclusion uh and that invites you to play through it a few more times on different difficulties or um you know uh, i want to do a thing similar to like what platinum games does with their games where if you play it again uh it assumes that you've you know it 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 redesigns the game assuming that you've already played through it once because you have uh so like it starts throwing more difficult enemies at you like right at the beginning all the encounters are slightly tweaked and different um, and you carry over all your upgrades and stats from the first game, you know, like a like a new game plus, right. um, to like really test your your abilities because I, I think there is still a bit of the like combat focus in the game, mm-hmm. and I want to really like test people on that if they choose to dive into it, you know, um, and that's probably like the the base as to where Luca goes from here, uh, you know, I want to release it on Steam. Uh, if there's enough interest or funding or if it like sells decently, I want to port it to uh, consoles like the PS4 or the Nintendo Switch because I think it would do well on those platforms. Uh, you know, porting costs money, so I can't plan on it right now, but uh, it would be nice to do. Um, I would really Are like to play. Are you thinking about Xbox? Oh, yeah, Xbox too. But yeah, whatever platforms I can get it on, I want to get it on. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's kind of the like boring like release kind of thing, but you know it's true. I wanna I wanna basically get this game out into the world and finish it, and then uh, you know be be proud of it and move on. You know, <laughs> maybe make an RPG after. <laughs> RPG Maker two thousand three. You know, Luca to uh, oh man to that the next big step. That'd be awesome. I'm I, uh, excited for the console release. I I wanted to play it on a big screen. I set up this like fifty dollar projector that my brother came into. Oh, nice! And I I sat down to start playing it. It's you know such a tight game, and the projector lag was so bad. I was just dying. Oh constantly. no! <laughs> I've I've gotten to play it on a, a seventy inch TV once, and that was really cool. Mm. Um, although a lot of the effects are like tuned to work on smaller screens, like a laptop. So when I put it on the TV, there was, like, way too much bloom, so I actually had to turn it down. <laughs> mm. uh, that was cool. But, but yeah, uh, I, I agree. I want, I want to play it on a TV. I want to play it on a PlayStation controller. Uh, and I want to uh, see people playing it on a Nintendo Switch on an airplane or something. That would be cool. <laughs> That's the dream, that. to see someone in public playing your game. Yeah, that you didn't force to play it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, I know I know Luca is more of a like a, a niche thing, but I've I've actually had a lot of success with getting people interested in it who normally aren't interested in games. I think just because of how like different it looks. Yeah. Um even though it is like at its core a very gamey game. Uh it's it's doing <laughs> some things that I think appeal to people who are more interested in things like visual art or uh you know, music and songwriting, that kind of thing. The music is terrific in the game, oh, really. Oh, I would say thank you, but I didn't do it. So I'll say thank you well, to uh, our composer, Nico. Uh, Shout-outs to Nico. Nico, you did a great job. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell him to listen to this when it comes out so you can hear that. Uh, follow my composer, uh, Nico, at Nicolo D. Teleska. I think that that's his Twitter handle. Put the, we'll put all these handles in the video description. Yeah, yeah that'd be good. Yeah. With... Also, while I'm doing it, shout-out to... Uh, uh, artist uh, Brianna Lay, who did uh, the header that's on the the Kickstarter, uh, worked with her to make that, and it's beautiful. So, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that. I want to talk about the the final boss. I also want to ask, and this is you know, a tiny question: Is it yes. possible to beat the very first boss? Yes, it is. Uh, you can beat the Harbinger uh, during the tutorial. I mean, right? Yeah, at the very beginning. Yeah, uh, yeah, you can beat it. Uh, and if you do, you get like 2,500 experience points. So you get like a really big boost. Uh, I, I like that kind of thing. So, uh, no, it's possible. Yeah. I figured it might be one of those things where you are going to die to this boss no matter what. But no, it just comes yeah. Down to skill. You will absolutely die to the Messiah, uh, because it's literally impossible to kill it. I made mm. sure of it. 
uh, like in the code, there's literally a Boolean that says cannot die. And that is checked <laughs> on from a side. So even if somehow you were able to like whittle it down all the way, uh, it will just never go past one HP. Hmm. Uh, Buddha so, mode. Yeah. So, uh, sorry. Sorry, people Shucks. who hate un unbeatable bosses. <laughs> well, it's good for the uh, the speedruns. You just walk right into them, you're good. Yeah, yeah, just get hit by two attacks and you're done. <laughs> Exciting. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, in the speedrun, uh, do you turn off the, like, the, the virtue that saves you from a hit, or is it, like, too long uh, what to do, you do mean? that? There's so there's a there's a virtue that you start with uh, called un oh, the uh, unstoppable. like mortal hit won't kill you. Yeah, I um, actually did not think of turning that off. That would have been smart. That would have saved me a hit, but I yeah. did not think of turning. I feel that like off. the time it would take to do that might just even out with getting hit by a second attack. So maybe so, and you know you lose time uh, not being able to pause in combat, and that yeah, just, yeah. Oh, know. in the new demo, you can pause in combat, but you can't do anything with it. It just, it, just it goes to a pause screen. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, in case I felt really scared restroom. the first time I played because I couldn't pause. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I originally wanted to be all hardcore like that and be like, no, no pausing the game ever. <laughs> but then I realized that, like, one, I wasn't actually going to have any online interaction in the game, probably, so I didn't need to worry about that. And two, it's, it's just nice to be nice to your players, so <laughs> let them. Like, in the new demo, you can even just, like beat some enemies and then go back to your last checkpoint from the menu and just keep grinding like that if you really want to grinding uh, i've always said is its own punishment you know if you want to abuse this you know leave yeah room and come back into the room that's that's on you 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 have fun yeah like i want i want people to be able to do that in case like you know they just really can't beat something but yeah. it's, it's definitely not the most efficient it, it, it's definitely not as efficient as just learning how to dodge I found that in um, killing the okay. um, the last killable boss in the demo, that not unfreezing the yellow guy makes it actually a lot easier. Is there any yeah. is there any science to that? I noticed that... on on your on your speed run that that was there. Um, mm -hmm. I have no idea why. Uh, is that something you've gotten like from other people? I haven't gotten from other people. Or, uh, I've gotten the only feedback I've gotten on that fight, besides that a lot of people really like it. Um, is that like uh, some people have a eureka moment when they realize that they can free the the person in the crystal, uh, um, and they really like that. But I actually haven't done any tests to see if it's just easier or not. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't even know because there doesn't seem like there'd be any reason as to why it would be easier if you're just fighting by yourself. Maybe because there's less visual information going on. Maybe or you can maybe just focus. Like, maybe. The the AI is easier to manipulate if you're. On your own, I don't know. Th but that could be it, part it of it. It got so much harder every time I unfroze the guy. I just stopped unfreezing him. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm interested. Like, it's interesting that you brought that up. Uh, yeah. I want to think about that some more. That and that you can you can start walking right after the boss fight ends. You don't need to wait for the camera to. Unlock. Yeah. That was a great discovery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was a thrill. It's funny. Like, I kind of when I first noticed that, I kind of hated it, and I was like, "Oh, I should fix it." But then I couldn't think of any like really easy way to fix it uh, <laughs> and be precise. So I was like, "Whatever. No one's gonna notice." <laughs> Found it. Or, <laughs> asterisk. Gotcha. Asterisk on that. No one who would like think of it negatively would notice. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. No reviewer is gonna see that and say, "Well, this game sucks. You can walk around with the camera locked. What's going on here?" Terrible. Seven out of ten. <laughs> IGN, 10 out of 10, worst game. Yeah. I, w I wouldn't mind a, a, even a 7 out of 10 from IGN. Uh, Just getting reviews is a nice thing. Yeah, because it means IGN wrote about my game. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> the Ectoplasma trailer showed up on IGN.com, and like they never wrote about it or anything, but it was really weird seeing that happen, and I kind of loved mm. it. That's uh, pretty cool. Because as far as I know, there's like an Ectoplasma entry on IGN.com, uh, mm. despite there not being any coverage of it. So, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh, but anyway, sorry, I, I distracted from we were talking about bosses. Yeah. Uh, so you said you got some controversy about um, that final sequence in the end. What, oh. What's that about? Uh, well, it's not even like controversy. It's just like uh, people having 
like either they're either bewildered and just like don't know what happened uh or like it doesn't work out as planned like i had uh someone uh tweet at me being like hey we got to the end and i reset during the like ending cutscene." so that was totally ruined yeah i <laughs> I, I immediately went in and patched that so that that was not possible but yeah yeah the uh, things you miss yeah and then uh and then I had someone who, like, uh, was, like, I was curious enough to play through the ending twice because I just, like, didn't know what happened. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's that's a bit better. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's like, like, I figure it's kind of, it's, like, it's a really gruesome thing, image. It's very gruesome. <laughs> yeah, and I, I kind of feel bad that it is, but I also, like, that's what I imagined. And it's it's supposed to be, you know, nightmarish and scary, and like something bad happens but don't worry you're not actually dead you'll wake up after that it's it was all a dream yeah i, I mean it's all a dream probably yeah. it even says <laughs> right at the beginning a dream those are the first words in the game <laughs> <laughs> i want to see people make theories about the game that it's all in a dream and then be like well yeah the big twist the well big done twist guys would, well done yeah the big twist would probably be that it's not actually a dream Whoa. i know right can you imagine it's a nightmare yeah oh that that sounds like the beginning of like a cheesy 80s movie trailer yeah. luca it's not a dream it's a nightmare summer 1985 yeah for sure um so that's what i meant by mixed reviews though is that like it was just hard to because it's like it, it goes pretty fast and it's pretty jarring that it's like you know what the heck is this bloody crucifixion sh- impalement shit what <laughs> i thought i got turned into a scarecrow yeah well that's another thing that people thought like uh the the person who had a who said they played through it twice um when they walked out into like that little garden area uh they mm-hmm. thought it was just a bunch of scarecrows and then on second play they realized like oh my god these are dead bodies yeah you know i I figured, uh, I didn't get the crucifixion thing. I figured this was a monster who, like, scarecrowed people, and I think that was equally terrifying. Yeah. Um, well, it's also, it's not really a crucifixion. I, I use that, like, in the technical sense, I mean. I, I just mm. use that as an easy term to represent, like, scary death on cross. It is you a know. scary death on cross. Yeah. And the sound, the sound it makes when you get turned into a, whatever you're turned into, yeah. that is so perfect in that moment oh you like it uh I that like is it. that is just the the player got hit sound slowed down oh it's so creepy <laughs> fun fact so spooky yeah i love slowing down um the uh the theme that plays during that fight is also a different theme from the game played at like 60 percent speed uh that'll probably change on the final version we'll probably just create an actual like scary ambient theme for that part but we'll see Again, the music is fantastic. It's just a you. You just got something really good here, and I think you're gonna. I think you're gonna do very well with it. Yeah, I mean, again, Luca is on Kickstarter. You should all get on there right now and and give this man your money. Yeah, please. <laughs> I want to finish the game. Uh, it's been interesting. Uh, I I hope it's successful. But I do. I I I don't think I would be doing all this if I wasn't uh, confident in the game. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's really nice hearing uh, that it, you liked it so much that you wanted to talk to me. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's a great pleasure. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me, Ben. Yeah. So that's um, all the questions I had for you. Once again, folks, the game is on Kickstarter. I'll put the link in the video description as well as all the Twitter handles and fun things you've heard in this video and links to dark souls and uh whatever else uh that's that's all i have for today colin thank you one more time yeah of course and And um, thanks for listening everyone happy camping folks all right i just finished cool let me press stop